What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Backstop, episode three. We are your hosts, Cbrev and BC Reviews. We got an awesome guest today, Big Kep. What's up, Big Kep? What's going on, man? Good to be here. Uh, awesome guest. I, I've been, uh, been yeah. called a few things. Awesome guest has I've never been one very, of them. Very basic vernacular for adjectives. So, um, <laughs> how you doing, Kev? Have you on here. No, it's good to be on here, man. BC hit me up, and I was like, for sure, man. Me and BC are uh, a lot alike. We just sound a lot different. Yeah, we both bald. <laughs> Depends on how much alcohol is involved, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm... so you want to tell the people uh, about yourself, Kev, that don't know about you? Ah. Uh... Coming, coming, coming into this, I don't know who doesn't know about me. If you don't know about me, you don't have to look very far because I'm sure a lot of people have good and bad opinions about me, and that's cool because it's to be expected the way I am. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a Twitch streamer. I'm a partner Twitch streamer. I've been partnered for about two and a half years now, I think. Um, started streaming on Twitch four and a half years ago, uh, so it took a while to get partnered. Uh, back then, it was a little tougher than it is now. Um, back then there was no affiliate and stuff like that either so um i'm uh soon to be 39 i am old when it comes to uh the streaming game because you know but my generation I'm, i'd like to say we pretty much started the video game stuff so i've been playing video games for a very long time uh, you, since brother. you know atari, atari atari nintendo you know well, we had every system growing up so it was basically our babysitter kept us out of trouble but uh I'm a married father of uh, four children. Two are mine, two are stepchildren. Got three dogs. Um, love sports. All about Philadelphia. I have on Ben Franklin underwear right now. Um, <laughs> that no, makes two kidding. of us. <laughs> I don't. Uh, but uh, I, I, I love streaming. I do it darn near every day, depending on if family stuff comes up or whatnot. Uh, predominantly Madden. I switched over to the MLB community uh, in... 18 MLB 18 so all of 18 all of 19 uh started out with 20 and uh it frustrated me so much that I went back to Madden let that sink in um <laughs> you went back to Madden 20 let's specify that yeah I went back <laughs> to Madden 20 <laughs> let, let that sink in a little bit um but I, I do I stream MLB Monday Tuesday Wednesdays and then I'll stream Madden Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday because of weekend league I don't know um, if you're familiar but, uh, with this, but uh, Zebra was highly submerged in the Madden community. I just think, did you? I've, talk I've seen, I've seen, I've seen some of uh, Zebra's tweets uh, with his weekend league record and stuff. Zebra's just a, a, a good at video games, man. Yeah, that's that. what it comes down to. He's just cracked when it comes to a pick. Give the yeah. man a controller. He's cracked. It, it's unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm past my prime. Like I'm decent. I'm above <laughs> average. Uh, that's not just something my wife says. <laughs> I'm above <laughs> average. I'm above average in video games as well. I can hold my own. I can. I, I've I've made some noise in some MLB tournaments. We're like, wow, Kep did that. Really, Kep beat who? So I mean, I've done I've done fairly well in some MLB tournaments that I've participated in. Um, and I've qualified a couple times for Madden tournaments, but nothing. You know, I'm not won any money or anything like that. When I'm streaming, I'm more about entertaining people and inter interacting with the chat and making relationships with people than I am about gameplay. And I don't get me wrong. I get you guys. BC knows. I don't know if Seabrev's ever watched me, but I'll get pissed if I lose or something doesn't go right. But at the end of the day, it's all about having a good time, making people laugh and stuff like that. I, I enjoy being an entertainer more than I do a competitive gamer. Because let's face it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna become a pro Madden player or or a pro MLB player. So it's all about having fun. So, Cap, how did you get into content creation? What made you want to start doing content on Twitch? I love, I love this, I love this question, and I know every time I come on a podcast, I. I'm, I don't know what it is. Like people ask me all the time. I guess I'm interesting. I don't know. I'm a hot commodity. I don't know what the hell it is, but um, this is the <laughs> third. This is the first of like three scheduled podcasts this month I've been asked to be on. So, and this nice. question, I've been on probably four or five others before this one. But uh, I love this question because there's not always there's not a playbook. There's not a rule book. There's not anything there's no to it. And me being an older guy too, because I didn't know anything about Twitch. I had no idea what Twitch was. I didn't know, I guess it was just in TV before. I had no idea what any of that stuff was. Because I was still into video games, but I didn't know anything about streaming, nothing. Um, I, I think when I found out, I, I barely was on Facebook. I didn't have a Twitter. Um, so I found out about Twitch through a couple of buddies of mine talking crap on Facebook about playing each other in Madden. Well, when you should stream it? I'm like, stream it, what the hell's that? 
stream it on Twitch. I was like, what the hell's Twitch? That was September of 2000, September of 2015 when I found out about Twitch. So you've been going and for I got on there. four and a half years. Yeah. I didn't officially, I didn't really start streaming until right before my youngest son was born, and he's four now. Um, I started streaming February of 2016 is when I officially started streaming. From September until then, I was just on Twitch watching Madden streams, watch, and that's all I knew was Madden. I didn't know there was a whole slew of things you could watch. I just watched Madden. Um, and I got into watching it and for, I dead ass for six months. All I did was watch. Um, I started like I dabbled in it a little bit because I had a 360 at the time. I didn't even have an Xbox one. Um, I was out of work. I went out of work with a shoulder injury and I started playing video games again. Just one day I was like, all right, well, I'm going to give this a try. It was, I had the 360. I had Madden on the 360. Um, I think Richard Sherman was on the cover. Yeah. 15. And yeah. And, uh, I downloaded the Twitch app on the 360 and people, it blows, it blows people's mind when I tell people how I started. When I started streaming until I really got into it, I was, I sat Indian style on the floor in front of a 60 inch TV with iPad, with, <laughs> with the chat on an iPad, my stream preview and the chat on an iPad. And I would play music from my phone. And all I had was a, a, a 360 headset one of those cheap ones that you plug into the not even like the one ear thing with the with the thing on the side it was only you could only hear like chat you couldn't hear you know you couldn't hear anything it was one of the cheap ass xbox mics so you could, <laughs> and i would have them i would have the music loud enough on my phone so that people could hear the music through my headset that's freaking uh, like it wasn't even that. i didn't have a i didn't have a connect i didn't have no i didn't have anything and then uh february Again, I, I I upgraded to Xbox One around Christmas time, and I was mad because I couldn't switch everything over that I had already done to the Xbox One, so I had to start all over. Um, but February, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing this thing um, for real. And by that, I had gotten a, a workman's comp settlement from my work injury, and the first thing I did was buy buy a laptop. Went out and spent sixteen hundred dollars on a laptop. Had a, a was using the laptop cam. Um, so to answer your question, what ultimately got me into content creation was a work injury, got back into video games since I was always, you know, since I grew up on video games and I saw everybody else doing it. I'm like, well, I mean, I got a sense of humor. I can talk to people. I'm pretty intelligent. I can hold a conversation. I've been through a lot in my life. I think, I think maybe I could do that. Never did I think it would get to where I'm at now, but, um, it was because of a work injury and I just started playing video games. I was like, why not let, let people watch me. And at that time, there was no ways to, there were, at that time, there was no ways, there was no ways to monetize it unless people gave you money through PayPal or whatever. And I never in my life expected anybody to be like, oh, this fucking this fat ass is playing video games. Let me give him some money. <laughs> like, it's crazy world, four man. And a half I, years, I didn't even know this four thing and a half years later, I'm Four and a half years later, I'm still baffled that people support me or anybody to play video games. I always have awesome. this theory that like it's content like honestly if you think about it like netflix streaming service hulu streaming service twitch streaming service so in my opinion the way i honestly look at twitch is i probably spend a, like when i view entertainment i probably spend a third of my time watching twitch streamers like and the other two-thirds watching you know tv shows which i'm it's hard probably to more pick. than that for me yeah, it's hard for me to pique my interest, you know? So I have a very, you know, I have kind of tunnel vision on what I like, you know what I mean? So there's only, like, I'll follow a lot of people, but who I actually watch is limited. And I kind of see this as, you know, if I subscribe to somebody, it's just like me paying for a Hulu, you know? It's me supporting that content that's being provided that I sit back and I enjoy. But as we all know, as all three of us being streamers, we're never going to ask for it. You know, we're never going to brag about it. We're never going to promo, you know, getting subs. But it's always, like, something that you always really feel good about that you can entertain that many people. I mean, I think you would probably I think there's, I think there's a fine. I think there's a fine line. I tend to shy away from the people that ask or... Yeah. I tend to shy away from those kind of people. There's a fine line between, you know, promoting... Like, I... I, I from day one, I... It's... I feel obligated to show appreciation for everybody that does it because they don't have to 
you know and the, and and i know um you gotta you gotta go an extra you gotta go a little bit extra mile for the people that do support you monetarily and the now don't get me wrong the people that are watching you even though they're not supporting you monetarily time is valuable time is, oh, yeah. you can't get that back you can get the money back you can't get the time back so i value people that support me even if they don't sub or don't donate or any of that stuff um but the game the game has changed the game has significantly changed from when i started streaming to what it is now everybody can you if you want to stream you can start monetizing your content in a week even yeah. less it took me two years to monetize my content is that how long yeah. it took well a, like, a little uh, under two years because the affiliate program came into effect like i think three months before i got partnered so i was an affiliate for a little while um and shout out to twitch whatever i shouldn't have been an affiliate at all because i had like ridiculous numbers and i got denied for partnership like 12 times with with the numbers of what the numbers were then uh as opposed to what the numbers are now that little you know they give you that checklist which don't get it doesn't even mean you're gonna get partnership that's just like right. a reference a reference yeah, spot it like doesn't mean you're gonna get part yeah it's like a it's like they give you benchmarks i give you i think they do that to just to keep people you know motivated. keep people on the platform give something give them something to shoot for yeah um, you always need numbers when you're striving for goals because that yeah. gives you a target so yeah. for sure um so you're kind of unique in that you've been in madden and mlb communities pretty entrenched in both of them the last couple of years so why don't you talk about the difference in the communities between the two games and kind of what your opinions are about each community oh boy <laughs> yeah, hold Shoot that back. Yeah. We love this. <laughs> yeah, uh, you wanted the I, hard questions. Uh, hey, I, 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 like I said, I, I didn't want to know anything about the questions. I didn't want to know what you had in store. I just, you know, because I'm straight from the cuff. The shortest distance between two points is my brain to my mouth. So, um, <laughs> which gets me in trouble sometimes. Uh, being being in the Madden community, man, the the Madden community, obviously, the big difference is, is the is the competitive scene, the esports scene. Um, Madden Madden gamers are so much more hardcore than MLB gamers are. I mean, you got your you know your top hundred MLB guys, and they're always you know the competitive community in MLB is pretty rabid, um, from what I've seen on Twitter because I have a lot of MLB guys follow me on Twitter. And I associate with a lot of MLB guys, and the same with Madden. Um, plus, I know a lot of those Madden guys from back in the day when I used to go to tournaments and stuff like that, too. So, um, But I think the, the biggest difference between the two communities is that if you're not liked in the Madden community, you know it. You know it. They, they, we are, when I say rabid, we are, I don't even know what the word is. Uh, rabid, ra rabid, I think it's more than rabid. I mean, I, and I've gotten I've gotten away from it a lot more now than I used to, uh, because it's just like it, it's unnecessary most of the time. But uh, if 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 you're somebody in the Madden community that's not liked, or you, you they'll, they'll let you know. Yes. And at the MLB community is a little bit more of a everybody love everybody kumbaya on the surface. Right. When you dig deeper, when you dig so deeper into that, <laughs> when you dig deeper into that kumbaya, everybody love everybody stuff, it's not, it's you not know, because I talk to, I privately talk to a lot of people. I don't know why people confide in me and I would never put names out there, but I, I see a lot of things. I, I, I get talked to personally and then later on I'll go on Twitter and I'll see a tweet or I'll see a conversation between, you know, and I'll be like, you just told okay no. <laughs> um there's a lot of I, I won't i won't say fake love i won't say that but i think because the mlb community is so small that everybody is more in tune to like i, I don't know what the word is it's kind of like dollar because... store toilet paper compared to charmin <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know how to put it because I, again, like I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of people in the MLB community too. Even because even when Madden comes out, I don't, I don't leave the community, or when MLB comes out, I don't leave the Madden community because I, again, I'm more into the relationships and the friendships that I've built, you know, in both communities. Because like I said, I'm not just, I have so many private conversations, whether it's through DMs or, or whispers or, I mean, hell, so many people have my phone number, email, you know, uh discord i had I invite 
people ask me if I got a minute to talk in Discord all the time. And I've gotten on a on a personal level with so many people. And I'm not even I'm not blowing smoke up my own ass. Like it's I truly have spent so, I spend more time doing that than I do streaming. Right. I spend you... more time on other people than I do myself. So well, I've gotten to know the temperature of not just the communities, but the people in the communities and the people themselves. So I, I, the the biggest the biggest thing between the two communities again is, and I think because it's so small, is that MLB's on the everybody love everybody kick. Where in Madden, <laughs> they don't love you. You know it. You, right. You know it. You you can't be soft uh -huh. in the Madden so, community, basically. Yeah. You think you, Madden's it, a little it, more real? Madden yeah. community's a little more real. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and I'm not. And again, I don't want to say that the MLB community's fake because, you know, that's just that's ignorant to say that it's fake. But I think. MLB community just tiptoes a little bit more, yeah. just tiptoes around, you know, um, and because when I first came in the MLB community, I was I genuinely went in streams and I wanted to get to know people same way I did when I started streaming Madden. Like I genuinely wanted to get to know guys, and you don't know you 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 don't know where you stand typically in the MLB community. You don't know where you stand as a streamer. You don't know where you stand as a content creator because you see, you don't understand if you don't get the same appreciation and love from other creators in the mlb community but you see other it's it's i don't know it's it's kind of like a it's like a double-edged sword i guess with the mlb community because they're not gonna they're not gonna say oh they're not gonna come right i'm saying like no i don't want to support you or i don't want to like they're gonna be nice to you they're right. gonna be nice to you I, I think they, they don't want to hurt their standing in the community too like oh he's being an asshole yeah i think or, it's more in know. the mlb community people care more about like i don't want to hurt somebody's feelings but then yeah they'll yeah. tell the buddy behind the back this is how i yeah. really feel yeah. and in the yeah. madden community i'm taking it fuck it we're just gonna tell you yep. this is how we feel yep. about you yeah was that a good stance yeah that's yeah okay with that being said like i have Sounds about right i have a a, a question here like Whenever you you were saying like you know you talk to a lot of people, some people do have your phone number, etc. Like, are you like really careful with who you surround yourself with as far as close friends who you actually give your phone number to, or are you more of like an open book? Like you'll talk pretty I'm much talk. An, I'm more I'm I'm more of an open book because at the end, I mean at the end of the day we're all I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I see the good in everybody until you give me a certified reason not to see the good in you. Yeah. See. Um I'm a pretty good judge I'm a pretty good judge of character. You know, I'm about to be thirty nine years old. I've been around my fair share of people, my life experiences, how I grew up, where I grew up, military, stuff I did after the military. So I'm a pretty good judge of character and, and more times than not, you know, I can see certain things coming. And I and I, there's there's people in the MLB community, there's people in the Mad community that I was cool with to start and true colors show. They do some things that don't do or say some things that don't sit well with me and i just distance myself um yeah. and that's that's happened quite a few times in both communities yeah, um big names small names it doesn't matter i don't i don't care if you're a big name or a small name if you do something that doesn't sit well with me i'll distance myself yeah I, and, and i think that's it a doesn't good it doesn't mean it doesn't mean i'm right it doesn't mean i'm i'm wrong or it doesn't mean they're right or they're wrong it's just something i don't want to involve i don't want to involve myself with somebody like that well, say, for instance, how long has it been since you kind of stopped MLB for a while and went back to Madden? How long has that been? No, I've, I'm still, I'm still playing, I'm still playing and streaming MLB probably two times a week. Oh, okay. So you're still Either. playing it, just not yeah, full, yeah. full time just, MLB. Yeah, just not, yeah, just not full time. I'm, I'm between the two. You guys know who uh, W is, Dub dot W. Yeah, he uh he's a predominantly a Madden guy, but he switches back and forth. That's pretty much what I do. Yeah, that's good. So the, it's pretty much like we got we could all agree, man. The content though that they're putting out these cards, I mean they're freaking great. Like so like you know you're seeing new new legends like the Braves legends. If you're a Braves fan, this is a great year. And even you know different teams, the Giants <laughs> last year. He's talking to a Phillies fan, bro. <laughs> He doesn't want to hear that. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad it's not the Mets. I'll, 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 I'll settle for all the Braves content. It's not Mets content. <laughs> it's not Tom Glavin Mets. It's Tom yeah. Glavin Planet. Yeah. <laughs> um, Braves fans are a lot nicer than Mets fans. So, what's that? 
Braves fans are a lot nicer than Mets fans, so it's a little easier like the Braves than it is the Mets. I've never been out there and seen the, those fan bases out east. And, Met, and Mets fans will say the same thing. Like they they, they despise <laughs> Philly fans. So I got another question uh, for you. Comparison between MLB and Madden again. Uh, it's about the Sony partners. I know Madden. I think it was two or three years ago when they first. I think it was when they first started doing solo battles. They had kind of like a Madden partner program, or they would have like people's teams in the game as like the featured team um how do you feel about the sony partner program for mlb do you think madden will do that at some point do you think it's good or bad for the game madden still does have it it's just not as open and the solo battles those teams were from anybody in the community it wasn't just people that were known now don't get me wrong they would choose people that were known or whatnot but they would do content creators youtubers stuff like that yeah. um there is they still uh, Madden still does have a program. It's called the Game Changer program. I think NHL has the same thing too. EA Game Changer um, for certain games. Madden still does that. It's just not as open, I guess you could say, because I think they made a lot of Game Changers for Madden take it out of their bio if, in their on their Twitter or social media, because I guess they didn't just didn't want people knowing who was. But at the beginning of the year, you know who is because they get flown to EA Play or they get flown to Orlando. Um, to get early gameplay footage so they can put it on their their YouTube channels and stuff like that. So you ultimately end up knowing who is and who isn't. Um, but I think I, I think it's cool. Like I I I hated the fact that they uh, SDS took the the Sony partners out of the game. I thought that was that was cool. I, I you know? agree with you. Um, I loved how how they did that. Even if it was like yeah, Road to the Show. A lot of people don't like online. They love playing you know Road to the Show. Even now, what do they have? Uh, March to October. You know, and people, and some people enjoy it, you know, that, you know, maybe aren't as submersed into the uh, communities as we are. Um, but I thought that was really cool how they did that. And it was just odd to me that all of a sudden everybody liked it. I did not see any complaints on that, you know, kind of like Shelfie Coogs having their own characters in the game. And then all of a sudden they're gone. But I love that aspect. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was like a budget thing or if it was just, you know, they didn't want to you know, do the, the motion capturing or whatever it is for, for those guys. But I, I thought that was cool. And I, I, there's, I there, there's been a, there's been a couple instances where the Sony partners have messed up, you know, but they're human, you yeah. know, I don't, you it's know, they're going like to, the air, air, the air is human. I think I th a lot of them get a bad rap and, and, and it's just the way, that's just the way life is. Not everybody's going to like you. Exactly. I think it's how, I think it's how you respond to the people that don't like you. And I, and the longer I've been on Twitch, the longer I've been in this internet world, I, I'm not built for the internet world. I'm not. I'm I'm not. I, I like face to face type stuff, you know, whether it's good or bad. I'm I'm a face to face type guy. So I think you have to you have to learn to give attention to the to the good people and leave the attention leave, leave the attention for the bad people non existent because you're gonna have people that don't like you. Like I don't understand how people don't like Shelfie. I don't understand how people don't like Cougs or they don't like twin because there, there's obvious there's there's actual people that don't like twin gaming like what like, how, how <laughs> that's do you know, crazy like, um and i can understand how certain people come off you know uh qua how quash can come off sometimes how uh spore can come off sometimes and it's all relative like you're not everybody's gonna like you um and i think that like the sony partners are way more out there than a lot of ea game changers are um and I think that's why Madden did that was because of all the hate EA game changes were getting. Because if you're out in the open, you're 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 gonna get you're gonna get unwarranted and unsolicited hate. Um so I did Sony partners have done a great job this year oh, yeah. um with with dealing with certain things. Um now I don't know if that's either because the community just doesn't care anymore and they're just like, Well, the game is the game, it is it is what it is. Um <laughs> oh, I so, guarantee you there but, are definitely detectives out looking at game history yeah. and stuff, you know, which is, yeah. it's oh, yeah. weird to me. It's like, worry about yourself, but also, you know, when these guys go in and they get these partnerships, they, they're very aware they're going to be under the microscope. And I'm the, I'm the type of guy to me, I'm the type of guy to meme everything. Like if you've, if you messed up, I'm going to joke about it. Like you just, you got to learn, you got to learn to be able to, to make comedy out of anything. Right. Um. And I think I I think I got to know Coogs because I was memeing him and 
uh, Mighty Goat situation or something. I just kept memeing it, making jokes about it. And he followed me on Twitter one day. I was like, oh, shit. I followed <laughs> him back. And then we talked in DMs. Uh, he was like, he, he found it funny. So that's why, so got to know Coogs that way. So Yeah, Coogs is way cooler than most people would think. Really I think is. I think it's cool. I think it, I think it's cool to what uh, Sony does. You might want to be careful with hot mics during events sometimes. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> other than that, you know, I think we all. I think, I think it's I think it's cool. I think it's really cool what what SDS does, and I you know put and they brought new guys in that you know wholeheartedly deserved it. Scuffy is now um, mm -hmm. a Sony partner. Uh, who else was that? I think they added Atrin. Yeah, Atrin. Atrin. Yeah, there, there's there's some guys that definitely, you know, deserve that too. And I and I think it's cool. You involve involve the people that play your game. Involve people that have influence over the game. And you know, I, I think it's I think it's really cool what they do. Yeah, I agree. It is. It, it's a yeah. it's a good it's a good promotion for the game. It actually, you know, we all know it helps the streamers too. Um, I'm not familiar with the EA Game Changers. Do like do the EA Game Changers? Is it like a different, like a big different role from the Sony partners, or do you do you kind of find them they're under the microscope as well? Not as much anymore. Like they used to be a gateway to the community, and and but Madden, Madden, uh, S SDS does a really good job at listening to community. Whether they fix something or not, they do a really good job of implementing things that the community asks for. And I think the, the Sony partners, because they're so ingrained in the community, because a lot of them stream or do YouTube and they have their own communities, the SDS is able to implement things that the uh, majority of the community is asking for. And I can't name anything off the top of my head, but when the dev, the dev streams were coming out, we were like, wow, they, they that's what we asked for and that's what they did. And it was multiple times that they've done that. So that they're good in that regard. I think EA Game Changers are just a mouthpiece. They don't have any input on what, like EA is just like, you know what? This is what we're doing. I said we're doing it. I don't care what the community says, we're doing it anyway. Yeah, so there's, <laughs> so, a, there's a big because difference. Because they know, <laughs> because, because they know that they're gonna, mad, mad, so many more copies of Madden are sold than MLB. You yeah. know, let's be honest. That's you know, a true but, story. MLB, even though, you know, the, Major League Baseball is great. I love Major League Baseball. We know football is king. So, and football video games is no different. I mean, you've got 2K coming out with a football game. That's probably not going to be very good. And people are only going to go buy it and play it because they hate EA and have hated EA for so long and have hated Madden for so long. And then EA just signed another five-year extension to where they're going to be the sole exclusive proprietor of Madden football for another five years. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to complain. Guess what? Next year, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to complain. And it's just going to, it's just, it's just always going to happen. Same with MLB. I love That's it. funny. All right. Last question, then we'll start wrapping it up. You've been transitioning, not transitioning, but adding on by starting to do YouTube content. How's that going for you? Do you like it? What's your like long-term plan with YouTube? Is it more of like a side thing? YouTube is tough. YouTube is tough. Not only because I'm a father and a husband and there's only so much time in the day. And again, I'm a personable guy. So I spend so much time in other people's streams, talking to people on Twitter, cutting it up, just, you know, being a sociable person. So YouTube is, is different in the aspect that it's not live. Like I'm such a lively personality. I'm so like, I don't rehearse things. I don't, I've recently started doing videos. I'm exploiting my my four year old child <laughs> to give me a reason to do YouTube because he loves doing videos. My four year old will come to me every day, Daddy, are we making a video today? And, <laughs> and he gets mad if I tell him no. Um, I think my biggest thing is, is with YouTube is coming up with content. Like I don't want to be a lot of YouTube content, in my opinion, is watered down. Everybody does the same thing, you, and mm -hmm. you just try and find small ways to do it differently. Um, I always told myself if I did YouTube, I, it wasn't going to be half-assed. It wasn't going to be. I wanted to. I wanted to be quality over quantity, and I. I'll. I don't have an editor. I don't. I do everything myself. I do the editing. I do the thumbnails. I've had to learn. I learned how to do thumbnails on my damn phone, um, by watching YouTube tutorial, tutorials. Everything that I've done that I've learned since I started this streaming, 
journey I've learned on my own. Nobody, nobody was there. Like no big names helped. Nobody had, nobody co-signed for me. Nobody had my back. I've learned everything on my own. And that's another thing that I, I enjoy too, is, is teaching people who want to get into streaming, who genuinely want to stream and, and do things like that. Like I make time for that too. So YouTube is tough. I think I'm sitting on like 965 subs right now. I started the channel five months ago, maybe five, six months ago. And it was sporadic at the beginning because I didn't know if I wanted to go both feet in. Um, so it was sporadic. I'd do like a, a video a week, a video, a, a video every couple weeks. Um, lately, I've been doing it quite a bit more again because, as I said, my four-year-old and then when my, my oldest son is here every other week, you know, he gets involved with it too. And I just, it, they love doing it. So it gives me, if I feel like I have a purpose because they're, they're, they love doing it and they want to see dad on YouTube and they, so, but YouTube is tough. Like I, it, it I'm is. trying to slowly trying to learn more editing because I want to, I see these guys like, uh, MMG or like some of these big time Madden guys, who is it for MLB that does like, like goes full bore with their editing and, and zooming and effects and all this other stuff. Cause Demo I don't, and I don't, Cougs and... I don't, well, I don't know that. I don't know that 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 uh Demu does i think it's just not i'm not saying he's a bad youtuber because he's not but no. like i'm more I'll, i will watch youtubers that put you know a couple hours into a video with editing and it, and don't get me wrong even if you're not doing effects editing takes forever yes it clipping does. stuff and finding stuff to add to it and so the guys that go the extra mile to like put on a show i don't know if you guys watch madden youtube but throne Mm -hmm. MMG, yeah. uh, AKS, a lot, a lot of these guys do all kinds of stuff. It's it's actually like watching an edited show. You and Throne and that's are the, the type only of stuff that guys I watch. That's the type of stuff that I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. And I'm slow. I'm trying to teach myself by watching YouTube and and watching tutorials and stuff like that. Like I use Vegas, Sony Vegas Pro, and even my, like I'm getting good at doing the the. The shitty YouTube videos where I just add a transition, I'll add an intro and sound effects or a clip or this and that. Um, the stream deck makes that a lot easier too, but I don't have everything on my stream deck that I want. Like how I edit a video is I'll record it. Nothing's ever planned. I'll just record it. My four year old says whatever he wants and I'll just, <laughs> I'll go back and I'll watch it. And as I'm watching, I'm like, Oh, this clip from this movie or this sound effect from this would be funny. Let me go find it. Let me let me clip that. Let me throw it into this uh, software so I can clip it down, crop it, and do this, that. It takes me two hours to edit a shitty video right now. So <laughs> I can't imagine how long it would take me to do one of those quality videos that I love and I watch and that I eventually want to do. And that stuff takes time, man. And I oh, just yeah. don't have the time. I, I would love to. Um you know, and I, and you know, the ultimate goal for YouTube is, that, I mean, I'm just having fun making content with my kids at this point. And I mean, I want to get to a thousand subs, obviously, you know, and I'm like 45 away from that. I'm pretty sure after this video, you're going to get there. Um, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think you need like 4,000, the ultimate goal for any content creator is to make money. You can you can sit here and be like, oh, it's, you know, it's about making friends. <laughs> like, yeah, it is. It is. But if you're good at if if you're good at something, don't do it for free. <laughs> if you're good at something, don't do it for free. Whether it's content or hand jobs, don't do it for free. <laughs> I prefer the latter, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so, I, I, I see. I want to. I want to. I want to. You know, even even if even if uh, even if I get a YouTube check one day for three bucks. Oh, three. Yes. It gives you, know? you some validation too. You know, where it's yeah. like. You I mean, I'm, like... I'm an old guy, right? I don't need any, you know, I've got a beautiful wife. I've got four kids, a military service. I mean, I've, you know, I don't need any validation, personal or from anybody else. I just want to have fun, want to entertain folks. And if one person comes to me and say, hey, yo, Kep, that was a good video, made me laugh. That's what it's about to me. So, yeah. Right. And I think you're right, too, with the quality over quantity. Um, like me personally, my YouTube videos are more like I'm not great at the game. I'm very average, so I have my method of, you know, more of entertainment and stuff, but, like, him, like, Seabrab, like, he's good at the game, 
but he's he's really smart. So like I even learned a new word. He called stipend. very very informative with his yes. videos. I've watched quite a bit of his videos with hitting tips or pitching tips. The tunneling one helped me out tremendously. So thank you. I didn't um, even know stipend was a word until last week. I, I learned, I learned like, <laughs> my vocabulary got added on to from watching a C-Brev video. C-Brev is, is very informative, straight to the point. No, like, he's just one of those one of those guys, like, if you want to learn something, watch him. Yep. Appreciate and, it, man. Well, Kep, uh, and, also what, what we never brought up is, uh, if for those of you who don't know, Kep is a veteran. So, you know, those of us in the U.S., uh, do thank you for your service because uh, many yeah, people don't know the, you know, commitment and dedication that that takes. So we do thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. I don't I, I don't know how to take that when people Well, say it that. is much I'm just, appreciated I'm, because I'm just, it I'm takes just special like, people. I, I, I know guys. I know guys that I served with or people that – or in the service, they'll be thanked and <laughs> welcome. Like, no, that's that's <laughs> not me. Like, I appreciate I appreciate the support because I mean it is a it is a thankless thing, but ultimately I know that I chose to do it. So I don't want to be, I don't like to be thanked for something I chose to do. In you know my opinion, I mean? like, though, it just, takes a very unique me. person to do something like that. I don't like to toot my own horn. I don't like to take credit for things. I don't like that's just I was raised that. You were going to be great at everything you did. You weren't going to get congratulated on it. You go be great that because that's what's expected of you. Right. <laughs> so I have a hard time with praise or and I, and, and I and I think a lot of people think that I don't praise a lot of people or, or congratulate a lot of people. That's just like I want I want to, but it's just not in me. It's not in my my DNA to, to applaud people. So if I if I give you a compliment or I congratulate you on something, fucking rest assured you definitely deserved it because it's not in me to do it <laughs> i think you and i are the same way a lot like that man like if i say a compliment i mean it because i don't throw compliments yeah. easy like i'm exactly. very I, I i think i've maybe thrown two compliments in the last two months and one was to uh that man right there boom when he hit 5k <laughs> subscribers and then right now when i just thank you for you know putting your life on the line to protect the country um but with that being said, uh, let everybody know, like, uh, what is your YouTube uh, channel? What kind of videos are you kind of pumping out as far as gameplay? Or is it more advice, tutorials? What are you really pumping out right now? Uh, I've done a couple gameplays. Um, I had an idea for MLB gameplay videos, like doing it through the replay system at the end of the game as opposed to, like, a live game. Um, I did one like that, and it was well-received. Um, but I just haven't had the time to. I had a BR game the other day, uh, and my I was trying to go 12 and 0 before Jers did, and it didn't happen. Although Jers went 12 and 0 last night, but that shit has an asterisk next to it because oh, his 12 was a disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> 12 was a disconnect. So Jers, there's an asterisk next to that shit. I don't know how these people um, always run into like the worst players ever when they're 11 and 0. <laughs> like every he time might, I get to like nine and 0. He matched up with Dude Food Gaming, so we all knew it was going to be a good game. And then after a, a bloop single, the game disconnected. We were like, "Boo!" <laughs> Let's be honest. If I, I would, I've, I've actually went twelve and zero both years I played the game. If I could do it, I, sh I swear anybody could do it. It's just you got to be focused that day. I've, I, on, I've I, only I ever gone. I've only ever got twelve wins in in uh, event stuff. I've never gotten a twelve in a BR. You had there's to the guys that do go twelve and zero you're a god because you have to have so much go your way with the with the dice rolls and stuff yes. that happen in these games so the guys that do go 12 and 0 like you got zo and all these other guys that are doing it like 20 30 times like like when you yo, see on twitter you, you number 38 ahead, you, i'm like how you you <laughs> you demon you you go right ahead you demon you you're you possessed <laughs> but uh i i, I was i want to edit a br game that i did the other day because it was I, I don't know. I forget who it was, but apparently he's known or whatever. He was up seven in the bottom of the third. I came back and tied it. He was up six in the bottom of the fourth. I walked it off, and I went nuts. I like, like I went nuts. I uh, you, it's kind of crazy how that it. rush can get you. You know what I mean? Because it's like a stressful situation, <laughs> well, the BR, but the payoff's so good. And, and I've and I've resorted to like if I'm going to play MLB, it's going to be BR because I'd rather be, I'd rather have three innings of dice rolls than nine innings. Yeah. So I'm gonna stick to BR because it's just not as frustrating as as ranked seasons. I love building my team and whatnot, but I do not. I dread like oh, ranked seasons. 
No, I'm going to play BR. <laughs> that I'm not sounds doing like it for me nine with innings. events. I, I have not touched an event game this year. To me, it's like, why would I want to get 30 wins when I can spend 12,000 stubs and get that card? But also, I understand like the this new prestige thing. Um, which that's why a lot like see Brad, you do that, right? Like you played events strictly to prestige. Yeah. yeah but I to me it's not in me because I'm limited. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all pretty much like limited on what we can do, but like as far as the gameplay, but I think I think you're right. There's always that mode that certain like a lot of people, like the comp players, they won't play Road of the Show. You know, they won't they won't even think it's not a oh, thought. No, yeah. I'm not I know I'm an old guy, but I hate offline stuff. MLB yeah, 18, way. all that offline stuff you had to do. Oh, it was so awful. That was, a, yeah, that was, that was so awful. awful. I think the only two cards I grinded for in 18 were Chase Utley and Mike Schmidt. Everything else? <laughs> forget Phillies. it. <laughs> two Phillies. I, ever, ever since online gaming was a thing, I started in 2003 online gaming. With the regular, the, the first Xbox, my thing was Ghost Recon playing uh, game battles, MLG stuff with Ghost Recon. Ever since I started playing online, I don't, I don't want to play the computer for anything. I hate solos. I hate missions. I want to play a human, and I want to cuss you out. I, I, the computer's not going to cuss back. Like, I want to, I want that competitive – because I'm a has-been, right? I'm a has-been. I don't no longer play in baseball. I'm no longer playing football, baseball, or softball, or hockey. Or I'm not doing anything on a real field. So that the, the, the gaming is what quells my competitive urge. And I get very competitive. I don't like to lose. So, um, But to go back – Right now, I'm only doing pack openings. I'll do pack openings for Madden. Um, pack, the pack packs and MLB, or I don't know how people do pack opening videos for MLB because pack odds and MLB are absolute garbage. What's crazy so, is people love watching him. People love watching. Uh, yeah, the because of the 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 the, uh, the suspense, right? Yep. But yeah. like me and my me and my four year old did a video yesterday. We finally pulled a golden ticket and we went nuts. So Which one did you pull? Anthony Barr. Uh, it's got so, a late one, right? <laughs> but yeah, well, it was, it's one of the most expensive ones right now. but Because he just uh, dropped. Yeah. But, uh, no, nah, I just do pack openings right now. Again, you know, my baby Kep uh, just turned four. So he'll turn five next April, and then he'll go to kindergarten. So maybe once he goes into school, I'll have more time to devote to um, YouTube and stuff like that and, and learning more. The ultimate goal with all of this is to, so my wife don't have to work. I'm going to be dead honest with you. My wife works her butt off. You know, she hasn't missed a day of work since this pandemic started. She's in healthcare. She puts herself in harm's way every day. And I, I'm blessed. I am so blessed. Content, a lot of content creators have no idea how blessed we are to make anything doing this. We, right. We're playing video games. We're entertaining people. We are so blessed. I'll never forget the days where I was sitting Indian style on the floor with no cam, no mic to where I'm at now. I have a command center. I have elite. I'm a 39. I'm about to be 39 years old. I have cam LED lights on my floor. <laughs> <laughs> I have monitors. I have a, I have a go XLR. I have a stream deck. I'm, I, I'm thank God I'm a jock because you would think I was a nerd. Thank God. I love sports games because people, your husband, my, tell my wife, my people tell my wife, husband's a nerd I'm like no the hell i ain't i play sports games <laughs> it's different so, the ultimate, like, the i ain't ultimate playing goal. animal crossing out here i'm playing a man's game <laughs> the ultimate goal the ultimate goal is to is to to make a living doing this and if anybody tells you different they're lying if anybody yeah. tells you different you know there's just a there, there's a just a way there's just a way to go about it you right. know be yourself be ethical you know don't 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 sell out. Don't sell. Don't sell out anybody else. Don't just be who you are. Have fun with what you're doing, and eventually that kind. Of, eventually that money will come, and eventually, you know, you'll be successful. You know, yeah, I'd like I to think. Hundred percent agree. You with know, you. there's different levels of success. I'd like to think that I've I'm already successful because I'm already able to 100%. help help put food on the table. I'm already able to help pay bills. Um, but the ultimate goal is to make to make it to where my wife doesn't have to work at all ever that'd be nice you know, that'd be really good oh. and you know just to kind of while we're, while we're kind of you know closing this out um the balance of family and your stream schedule like how do you 
like this is and then we're gonna so we're gonna close out after this of course but how do you how do you, how did how long did it take you and how did you find that common ground with being a father a husband and a streamer which i know you stream over 40 hours a week at minimum like how did you how were you able to find that balance and how long did it take you still haven't <laughs> I still haven't, to be dead honest with you. I still haven't. Um, when I first started this, my wife's not a video game person. I'm, I'm her second marriage. She's my third marriage. So, um, and both my divorces, video games attributed to those divorces because I wasn't spending any time with them. I was, I'd go to work, I'd come home, and play video games. Um, so, I, you have to consciously do it. You have to consciously pull yourself away. Um, you know, so these, these guys that aren't married, aren't, don't have any kids do it now because once you do, or if you ever plan on it, it's going to change. Um, my, my, my schedule is forever changing because, you know, I don't know what my wife's got going on. I don't know what the kids got going on. You know, today my wife was at a, a pool party for her friend's niece and baby kept got stung by a bee and I'm sitting here streaming. I'm like, Oh shit. Well, you know, what am I going to do? What, you know, do I have to cut the stream? You know, luckily there was a podcast I was supposed to do today that got pushed back from earlier in the day <laughs> to now. So, oh, that was somebody's fault. But, yeah, we had your best interest in mind. We knew. So, um, I, I still haven't, you know, there, there's days where I don't stream and I'm still up here, still networking, still conversating with people. I'm on Twitter. I'm playing the game. So you have to, I tell you, it, it gets easier to be to be perfectly honest with you. My me and my me and my wife got into you know we don't bicker. Me and my wife are we're meant for each other because no, no we can handle her, nobody can handle me. So <laughs> I'm able to handle her, she's able to handle me. We love each other enough to handle each other's shortcomings, and that's, that's good that you, know, you can find common ground on that. For, yeah, for any for any of you out there looking for a mate, you got to be able to put up with the person's shortcomings because we all have them. So, um, but I still I still haven't. I've gotten better with it. I've gotten better. But um, when you first start out and if you have a girlfriend or a wife, they really won't they really won't become more understanding till you're like look what I made playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> you're able to buy, you're able to buy them something, you're able to take them to dinner. It was a joke. It was a joke. My uh, I took her out for a, a nice dinner the first my first Twitch check. And she was like madden money paid for this <laughs> <laughs> I know. Kind of look what i did you. it paid off see baby <laughs> no, i mean i mean as a man as a as an old school man too is like i know times have changed my wife makes could make way more money in her field than i can in mine if i were to go back to work i'd probably be making about the same as i do playing video games and, and i'm able to stay at home I'm, a, I'm able to stay at home i'm able to stay at home take care of the kids like daycare is crazy, like daycare is outrageously priced, and you don't know if your kids being taken care of the correct way. There was a daycare in North Carolina that got busted for Baby Fight Club. Holy <laughs> moly! Baby Fight Club. Now, don't get me wrong. I know my four-year-old can take care of himself. He can probably put money on him, but I don't want my kid at Baby Fight Club. Like I just so, money. And I and I even said like if I'm not if I don't blow up by the time he goes to school then I'm gonna take my butt back to work and streaming will become a hobby not a way of you know providing exactly. and as an old school man like it's nice to on on the 15th of every month be like hey babe here you go transfer to all the bank account take care of the bills take care of grocery shopping do whatever it is you need to do and and, and it's nice because I do I, I do I do put stuff back I do put what I make back into the community by either subbing to other people, gifting subs, donating to people. I do sub giveaways every month for people that sub to me. So I, I'd love, I, I don't make it. Uh, it's, I don't, it's not a secret. Most of what I make goes to ease the burden on my wife, right. but rest assured, I feel obligated to somebody that takes, you. you should be able to give, you should be able to give as well as take. Don't just take, 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 take. I agree with you hundred yeah. percent because without people giving, you don't have anything. So I feel obligated as a streamer to give back as much as I possibly can. I really now think I know, that's a great I, mind to I have. know if I ever do blow up, if I ever do blow up, 
I'll be doing a hell of a lot more than I do now. Rest assured that. Because without without viewers, without you wouldn't get anything. You'd just yeah. be you'd just be a nerd sitting in your chair playing video games. Yeah, and my and, and honestly in my view, you're you're doing a great job. Honestly. We were talking before we, we started this and I was telling Brev, I've I've never seen him have less than hundred viewers. I, like that's a low viewers for, for Cap, which honestly speaks volumes. You always have a hundred people that are dedicated to watching you. And that's I do have good. I do have a very I do have a very dedicated community. Um so but it it didn't start out like that. I always tell people that just just do it. Just consistency is key you can be the most you can be the most boring person on the face of the earth but if you give people a certain time on a certain day every day your event you, everybody everybody has an entertainment value don't let anybody tell you you're not entertaining because there's somebody out there that does think you're entertaining and right. if you can't stream for 10 you don't deserve to stream for 100 exactly i agree with you 100 percent. you couldn't have said it better Okay, well, All right, we'll, do we'll go yours, ahead and wrap well. it up here. Um, Kep, you want to talk about your sponsors before we head out? And by the way, all his YouTube, Twitch, Twitter will be in the description of the video. This yes, uh, my YouTube is Kep's Culture with a K. Um, Kep's Culture K with uh, cultures with a K. And a lot of people don't know this. I when I tweet out or anything with culture, um, the lower K, the K is lowercase because that's me. The end of the rest of it is uppercase because that's the biggest part of what I have is everybody that made it possible. That's why mine's lowercase. The rest of the word culture is an uppercase because you guys have. I've noticed that. I never know um, why you done it. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, I'm sponsored by Control Freak. If you want to get freaky with me, not in that way. Um, <laughs> you can go to controlfreak.com and uh, use code BigKep13. For ten percent off your control freak, and they do, they do other stuff other than uh, the thumbsticks. I have a pretty cool commercial that I did with uh, Adina Howard's "Freak Like Me" um, music video playing in the background. Uh, <laughs> I made a little, a little music video seductively twirling my control freaks and stuff. Nice. But uh, I'm all control freak, and then I just recently got sponsored by uh, Need for Seat. Anybody in the market for a gaming chair, um, you'll get what you pay for. They're, they're expensive, but um, I can't get one until I sell five. So if anybody out there needs five chairs right quick, let me know. <laughs> um, I, I think it's funny. Like, I they hit me up, and they were like, uh, we want to sponsor you. I was like, okay, well, I'm sitting in a DX racer. How do you want me to pr promote your chair? I'm sitting in a DX racer. I mean, I got to sell your stuff before I promote. Okay, okay, all right. Man, I'll try it. I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and put taxonomic. <laughs> on it, right it tape over the bx racer um and then i'm also an affiliate with uh fanatics if you guys want hats apparel um you know it, what you it your, helps me uh, out what's your what's your code for fanatics i think most most audiences no actually... it's, it's not it's it's not a code it's uh it's basically i'm like basically like a middleman like you can go through me and i get 10 percent um you know fanatics is always doing sales and stuff like that so if you purchase something through me, I'll give you a link, and it just, I make money off of it. I'm basically like a, a salesman for them. I'm basically like a third, like Fanatics is a partner of MLB Shop or that I'm a partner with Fanatics, so I just get a cut, basically. So um, definitely, if you're a lot of, a lot of people have come yeah. to me, a lot, of, a lot of people have come to me for that stuff, but the only thing that you get a coupon is with uh, Control Freaks. So if you need Control Freaks, and they do work. I've got Control Freaks on every one of my controllers i use it yeah. for madden i use it for mlb yeah, i use it for call of duty um and i and i use it on both I, I, my favorite are the rush i honestly got a think lip. the most underrated control freak item are these grip pads that control mm -hmm. freak makes man it i don't makes have a problem with i don't have a problem with sweaty hands you old bogey <laughs> I, 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 man that's a game changer for me i i don't know about you guys y'all like all right i'm not with them i'm the old man all right but you can't we're close baby we're close but really though one of the most underrated products right here i think they're like 15 bucks and it's just it's been way better for me are they like cheeto dorito proof Yep, Trito, <laughs> Trito, <laughs> beer proof, whiskey proof, everything. They're they're wonderful. I haven't I haven't used I haven't used any of the grips. I just use the the the, the thumbsticks, and so they've, they've on completely the code, guys, changed the way. So for code, uh, the code is big cap thirteen. B I G K E P one three. So that's ten percent off. Yes, sir, ten percent off. Yep. All right, so make sure you use that, boys. 
Well, I appreciate you coming on, Kev. Thanks so much for, for chatting with us today. It was fun, man. It's one of the the most fun we've done so far. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. Cuff, so. Loved it. <laughs> I I'm appreciate all about, you a lot. I'm all about having fun, man. Thank you guys for having me on. And uh, you guys are, Rev's cheeks are red from smiling and laughing so much. So. <laughs> yeah, I did that's my how job. I am, dude. Reddit I did my told job. Me that some guy on Reddit said he can't watch me on Twitch because I'm constantly laughing. It's a direct quote. <laughs> so, <laughs> what if that? What? I was like, that's not an insult I was expecting to see. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But... How do you take that? Search inside yourself if you find out, if you find somebody laughs and smiles too much. <laughs> yeah, not enough laughing and smiling in the world right now. So, for real. You keep laughing yeah, we and appreciate smiling. you a lot, Kev. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, I'm thanks, appreciate it, brother. All right, guys, that'll close it out. Appreciate you all watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Be sure to check out Kev, and until then, peace out.